uh, when we're talking about God's plan, we need to know uh, the other side, not doing it his way, what that really is. And we're talking about sin because sin is missing the mark. So God has his way for us to do things. And then when we don't do it his way, we miss God's mark and we sin. All right. So anything that misses God's mark is sin because God is perfect and he requires for us to be perfect. Amen. God's way is perfect. Look, somebody say God's way is perfect. He doesn't error or make mistakes. Matthew 5 and 48 tells us, be ye therefore what? Perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is what? Perfect. This is a requirement. Look at somebody say it's a requirement. This is not an option. This is not a suggestion. This is what people think. They think the Bible is suggesting a better way, but you go on and do it your way. This is not an option. This is a commandment. This is Jesus saying, be ye therefore what? Perfect. Even as your father in heaven is perfect. That means live up to God's standard. Living up to God's standard. Amen. And you know, we, ought to draw, we have to draw lines. Here at ABC, we have lines that we draw. And we don't allow those lines to be crossed because what may cross those lines may draw something else far worse to cross it that may cross you see what i'm saying amen so you know we keep a, a good appearance in here we don't let no women come in here hoochified and showing stuff amen we'll stop you at the door and throw some we, we'll wrap you in some of this insulation i mean this uh soundproofing we ain't gonna give you nothing comfortable because you shouldn't have, amen we ain't give you an abtc uh, sweatshirt for free we make you pay for that girl buy this and come you can come in Amen. Because we, we, cause once, you, once you let the guard down, the next week, Cardi B going to come to church. The broke Cardi B with no money. Still stripping. Yeah. And so you got to draw the line. Amen. We keep our men looking out. We don't have no men wearing earrings. We'll ask you to remove your earrings. Amen. Got men, all of our hair is cut nice and neat. We don't have nobody slanging hair long. Amen. We don't, we don't, we don't want that either. Because once you start that, then they got the colored hair. Then they got it sticking straight up like uh, old Dale Beckham. So you got to have the standard. And that's our standard in here. And man, if, 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 if you got a problem with that, just go somewhere where your, your, your wild hair is welcomed. Because once you let the wild hair and the earrings, some dude going to come in here with, ain't no telling. He have a dress on, a skirt, transgender come in. And we catching it early, right when you finna transgenderify your hair color, and we going to catch it. Come on, come on, anybody in there. We don't need no men in here getting that kind of attention. Because that's not what this is about. God is the one that's getting the attention in here. And we learned that early when we had youth ministry. We make them take that junk off for you. You can come in. But you come in here transmitting when you're supposed to be coming to receive. Amen. If you come in here to receive, don't be transmitting. Sending off a signal to get attention. Amen. But, you know, boys will do that when they don't grow up, when they don't grow up with their fathers. A lot of times they'll push their moms, you know, they'll push that feminine nature in the woman and she'll have him looking feminine. That's why all the black men, most of the black men, now they look like women. Slanging hair, tight clothes. So I do it in the, uh, uh, we was eating yesterday. Ankles all out, he had on some furry Gucci slip-ons with his feet in them and fur around, lined it, but his heel was out. <laughs> Big old man, about 6'3". <laughs> Big waste of nastiness. <laughs> in line, you know, he had that banana back. <laughs> you know, the banana. 
need surgery. You need surgery. Put a, open your back up and put a broomstick in it. Straighten you up. Oh, broke off broomstick. <laughs> so we're trying to be perfect, okay? We're trying to be, we're trying to live up to God's standard, amen? All right. Error changes the course of a thing. So this is, now God don't want you to sin because when you sin, you change the course of a thing, causing it to miss its mark or the ideal intention for it. So you're going to miss the intention for something when you sin. Amen. Amen. God had intended for you to get married, marry someone, have a child, whatever. But because you sinned, you had a child out of wedlock. You changed the course of something. The intentions of something. You've made your way a little harder. Or you was married and had kids, then you divorced. You just changed the course of a thing. And you made things a little harder. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So it's not about you sinning and trying to get away from it. That's why I don't understand the whole eternal security thing. How much can I sin? Brother, how much can you sin? You mean how much can you change the course of things? Is that what you're asking? Like how much you can wreck stuff to the point to where you can't get it the way it needs to be. So you have to go to a church that's going to preach to the way it is with you. Instead of, you can't even tolerate someone preaching truth because you done done so much out of line junk that you don't feel like you can even line up with it. So I'm going to go to a church that's neglecting the preaching. I need a church to make me feel good in the sin I'm in or in the foolish state that I put myself in. Yeah, that's why they go to the Potter's house and to Joel Osteen and all these places. They, they're going there because they know they're going to cater to their foolishness. Make them feel good being dumb. Never tell them to quit sinning. Never tell them stop sinning and you will stop your problems. No, they just tell them, oh, all the problems you've been, look at you, honey, baby. All the problems you done been through, sugar bear. All the stuff you done done, look at you, you should have been dead. You should have blew your brains out. You shouldn't be here, but look at you, look at God. Look at God, what? They're still there and still dumb. And when they leave there, they're going to do something else dumb. And they're going to need another message to tell them that they should have blew their brains out because it was so dumb. Amen. So error changes the course of a thing. So, I mean, this is why we don't practice sin because we want the original intention. We want the, God's intention to stay. If God is intending to get you to a certain place, we don't want to keep doing things to mess that chance up. That's why sin and holiness don't mix. This is the definition of Sin, missing the mark, causing something to change. When mankind sinned in the garden, they caused something to change. Mankind changed. The length of time man lives changed. Man having to work and provide for his family, that changed. Woman having to have birth pain, changed. It, it just changed everything because error, they sinned. Change Cain. Cain wouldn't have been crazy and wilding if his parents hadn't done it first. I know I'm preaching. James 4 and 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will do what? Draw nigh to you. So cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye what? Double-minded, meaning stop being a hypocrite. Purify your heart. Stop sinning. Look at somebody say, stop sinning. And don't you get offended by that. You just stop. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about that face you just made. That's sin. It's so ugly. <laughs> but it's sin. Whenever you miss God's mark, whenever you go your own way, it's sin. That's so why I don't understand these folks, preachers and stuff, just won't preach against it and want to do everything the world is doing. Don't you know all that is in the world is sin? 
That's what the Bible says. Everything the world is pushing you to do is sin. Whether it's listening to sinful music, watching sinful stuff, everything is sin. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. If you live for the world, you're living to impress people. That's sin. Getting yourself in debt to impress somebody. That's sin. Having stuff so somebody can look at you. That's sin. That's the pride of life. God's desire for us is to live holy and what? Acceptable. Some folks just unacceptable because of the way they live. If you go into the club and you're a Christian, you're unacceptable. There's no difference in you and the sinner. If you want to be around sinners all the time, you're unacceptable. Somebody sent me a video the other day of Fred Hammond. At Justin Timberlake's concert, and I wouldn't have sent this to nobody because he was so far back. I'm like, brother, don't you know Justin? Why are you sitting all the way in the back? His seats were terrible. But he's filming with his phone this uh, symbol that they had flashing, and they had lights and different things flashing on it. And he was just mystified at it. So after it finished, he looked at the camera and was like, wow. But the symbol was the mark of the beast. It's the devil's mark. One of the devil's many marks. And he was flashing it. And he was just, wow. And all the comments, is this the new, what commission going to do next? Is y'all the... You had Justin Timberlake, you had a Satan worshipers concert. Because Justin Timberlake worships the devil. Right? Look, somebody. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, guy. I'm listening to suit and tie all the way up here to church. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Man, he worships the devil. Because of his level of fame. The Bible told you a house divided against itself cannot stand. So how can this brother reach the level of fame but be divided against the fame giver? He has to be in agreement with the one who owns the fame. Who owns the fame? Satan. You know how I know? Because the Bible said he's the God of this world and he offered the same thing to Jesus. <laughs> he told Jesus, Jesus, all the kingdoms of this world, I'll give to you because they're mine to give. If you just bow down and worship me. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Well, folks, scared of this. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, Justin, he don't be cussing in his songs. You think cussing is the mark of sin? What else is he saying? I'll preach this message. It's not an option. It is a commandment to be holy and acceptable. This ensures that his plan, God's plan, is fulfilled in our lives. So the only way to assure that his plan be fulfilled in our lives is for us to live holy and acceptable. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness, what? In the fear that you ought to be scared to keep wilding like that. There ought to be some fear in you. Can I keep preaching? The younger you are, the less of the future you plan for. So young folks, the younger you are, this is why your kid does dumb stuff. He'd be like, what? Don't you know you got drunk and driving a car? You in a car with somebody? Don't you know you could have just ended your life? But, but the party was going to be good. The party is one night. Your whole life could have been ruined. You could be dead. But that party, Willie was going to be there, mama. 
And you just don't understand, so you just break them, just beat them up. I mean, and it's good to do. Just whoop them, because they don't, but they don't, they can't think far in the future. Their mind hasn't matured to the point to where they can see past the now. That's psychologically proven. I'm not telling you something I just made up. They don't have the mental capacity to consider their future. I know I'm preaching. In other words, a teenager typically doesn't consider the future when they have to make spur of the moment decisions. So you catch them off guard, got to make a spur of the moment decision. Get ready to lose their virginity. Uh, okay. The whole future. Just like, dude, you could get pregnant. You catch nasty. Dude, anything can happen. Your whole future could be jeopardized. And you just, uh, okay. Because they're thinking about right there. That's all they have the mental capacity to do. I know this is good. This is psychological. This is a uh, psychological fact. First Corinthians 13 and 11 even testifies of it. And it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. And what? I did what? I understood as a child. Meaning I didn't quite understand consequences. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I did what? I got to put away those thoughts. Now I have to really consider the future. What I'm doing is going to mess my life up. The guidance of an authority is essential. Look at somebody say essential. To preserve the future of a child. So this is why you teach them before. They, I know they don't want to hear it. Girl, you don't have sex outside of marriage. You save that for your husband. People aren't preaching that now because they're not preaching about husbands. You don't save your virginity for your career. But if all we talking about is your career, then we've opened the door for you to lose it. Is that what it's about? No, we get on their nerves. We're supposed to get on our kids' nerves. You're supposed to. You're supposed to get on. You're not supposed to be their friend. Friend. Don't you know all of their friends are as dumb as they are? Their friend selection is scarred and marred by their own foolishness. They don't have to admit, if they can't see the future, then they can't tell whether or not they should keep that friend. That's what a parent is supposed to do. You're supposed to step in. Oh, no, you can't hang out with Sheila no more because Sheila's a stanky slut. But mama, nobody likes her. That's because she's stank and she's a slut. But I feel sorry for her. You can do that from a distance. But they can't, they, they can't, they, they're just thinking about right now. He's my boyfriend. We don't have no boyfriend. You're too young for a boyfriend. You ain't old enough to get married. You don't have no boyfriend. But, but he loved me. No, he don't love you. He just want to get your panties. Are you crazy? He don't have the mental capacity to love you. He can't even think. He can't think like that. He don't know what love is. He's too young. This is what parental guidance is. He's too young. He don't know, and you don't know. And every time you argue with me, I'm going to slap you because you don't know what you're talking about because you're too young. You don't know. You need an authority to come tell you that. Amen. Is he going to feed you? Because if you're going to eat my food, you're going to do what I say. Every word of it. Every word of it. You're going to do it exactly like I say it. Because to me, whoever's influencing you need to feed you. Is Justin Timberlake going to feed you? He going to send you a check?
but they live for the now. So they need an older guide to stop them from hindering their future progress. Proverbs 22 and 6 says it like this. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is what? Not when he's young. When he's old, old, old enough to understand his future. How cause and effect actually works. Our preaching here. Our society keeps lowering the age of consent and removing authorities that protect children because they desire for everyone to have issues that the media can control and manipulate. So they want the young people sexually active and crazy. They don't want the parent. Y'all, they want the young person to sue the parent. Leave the parent. Come talk to the school psychologist and you don't even have to report it back to the parent. You can go confide in another adult that's probably a part of the LGBT and it never get back to your parent. You can go have an abortion and it never get back to your parent. They want you to make a decision that could change the rest of your life without parental guidance. When I was in the school, I, that was years ago when I was teaching at, at, at the school. And they wanted, you know, when, when, when kids would come and confide in me, they would tell me, you know, you don't have to tell their parents. They may tell you anything, but you just keep it. You don't have to tell the parents. I was uncomfortable with that. It's like, don't the parents need to know? Because if this was my daughter, I'd want the parent to know. I'd want to know. But they want to do away with parental guidance. And they want to lower the age of consent. They've been trying to get the age of consent lowered to 13. But our society wants to lower the age of consent. So Obama was pushing for this because older men want 13-year-old boys to be able to have consensual sex with them. That's what it is. Yeah, and so they want to lower the age of consent to do away with parental guidance and, and, and parents advising them. But the worst part of this is when some of these women have these babies at very young age, they don't ever mature, and so they don't have any guidance to give the child. They have to be guided. You got big mama in there trying to guide her daughter and the daughter's daughter. Three generations of foolishness under the same roof. No parental guidance. It's the way the devil wants it because he knows once he gets an issue in your life, the media can manipulate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Fred Hammond sitting in Justin Timberlake. You know why he was at that concert? Because he got issues that Justin Timberlake ministers to. Oh, boy, I preach it here. That's the only reason you sitting at a secular concert because something they're singing about is in your heart. Oh, come on, folks. You sitting here in church singing the praise and worship songs because it's relating to something that's in your heart. If God is in your heart, you don't mind singing about him, right? So if debauchery and sin and foolishness is in, devil worship, whatever it is, is in your heart, you're going to have to go get someone to minister to that. So you mean all you listen to is gospel? Brother, I don't listen to that much gospel. You know, because I found out a long time ago, I just don't need music like that. I might listen to some old school gospel or something or whatever, but I, don't, I just don't need it like that. I listen to talk radio. I just don't have to have music. Wait a minute, I ain't like you. I have to have something bumping in my truck. I would, I would. But then you're easy to manipulate. That means something is wrong with you that you're trying to cover up with music. You need it loud. Get in your car, ears just start bleeding. Boom, boom, boom. Like, brother, turn that down. Man, it gotta be so loud I can't see straight. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> brother, you trying to <laughs> you trying to quiet them demons, dude. You got demons. Why are you riding, crying, listening to rap music? Why are you crying? Brother, you got issues. <laughs> Booming and cussing got you crying. What's up wrong with you? Brother, you need, you need counseling. 
Need to have a counselor at Car Toys. <laughs> what size speakers you say you want? Okay, well, to get those now, they, they made a new law. You got to talk to this counselor back here. <laughs> you need it that loud in the trunk. Yeah, but they want you to have issues because the internet, oh my gosh, the internet's coming for your issues. You know how the internet come for your issues because you sad and depressed and down on yourself because some kind of crazy sin that went on in your life or something and you're just out. So now you're sitting looking for likes to see who likes you. And you post a picture of yourself and just count the likes. Oh man, only four people like me. Oh man, I must be real whack. Huh. Comments. Let's see what they're saying about my picture. Girl, you look good. Oh, made me feel better. Yeah, your issues. They know that the internet, social media can manipulate you if you have issues. Oh, I'm preaching. Ephesians 2 and 2. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit now worketh in the what? The spirit of the course of this world. The one who changed the course of this world away from God's original intent. That spirit is now working in the children of what? Folks that's doing it their own way. The world's way. The prince and power of the air. Airways, internet, radio, whatever you want to call it. And they're manipulating your disobedience. For a person to think outside the box is almost impossible today because of the hive mind or collective consciousness of social media. This is the order of the new age, the new world order, or the new order of the age. The new world order is for everyone to think the same thing. Everyone be a part of the hive mind. The hive mind is just like a beehive. Every bee is working to make the hive bigger. That's it. Any bee that's not working to make the hive bigger dies. Any bee that returns without its stinger that cannot participate dies. It's just the way it is. And that's the way the devil wants it. He wants us all believing the same thing. The hive mind, collective consciousness. When was the last time you put a comment uh, uh, that you liked something that Trump did on the internet? Put that on your Facebook and watch what happened. First, your crazy family members are going to chime in. What? Who? What? He prejudiced. He don't like black people. He said it. He said it. They said he said it. He said it. Like he can be president if he said that. They, they elected him. They, they. Y'all can't believe it. So that's your family first. Then after your family... People that you don't even know start commenting. What? How do you? Wait, first of all, who are you? They don't even exist. They're bots created by Facebook, created by Instagram to comment. They load these things on the computer. They come and they comment on negative things to push everyone to the collective consciousness. They're not even real people. Yeah. What do you think the internet was created for? Everything is going into the internet now. Everything. That's what it was created for. Collective consciousness. One world mindset. One. Everyone think the same thing. Ooh, it's quiet in here. Yeah, so that's what this is for. Revelation 13 and 17. That no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You got to have something of the beast to be able to buy or sell in this, in this analogy that John is given. Something. So this is the way they do it. Get everyone on the same page. Make everyone think that sin is okay. And anyone that comments and says something is wrong with it, you're going to get challenged to the point that you just give up and you'll start saying, man, I ain't putting that on the neck. Because if I put it on there, I know everybody going to go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, got you second guessing even saying something. 
making you ashamed of Christ, ashamed to take a stand in front of other people for fear of their comments and what they might think of you. And Jesus said, okay, well, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you when I stand before my father. Yeah, I put them all on blast. Don't you come on my page. What? <laughs> you see me type that. <laughs> I don't care. I was telling y'all last week how they just, they just start uh, uh, subtracting from the, 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 those that follow me and taking away from me. It's like, I don't care. I don't care what they do. I'm going to tell the truth until they won't let me on the internet anymore. I said, brother, we're sorry, but you're banned from the internet. Oh, well, you got to come to church on Sunday then. Ban me from the church. I'll be at the house. Amen. I, 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 please. I'm not ashamed of what Christ has done for me. I'm not ashamed of who he is in my life. I know that I live, I move, and I have my being. I breathe because of him. So ain't let no devil make me scared. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Accepting societal norms and rejecting sound doctrine is the plan of the enemy for this generation. So he wants this generation to just accept societal norms and reject sound doctrine. The vast majority of entertainment and education is tainted with antichrist to indoctrinate this generation. That's what they created public school for. You thought they created public school so you can learn? You can learn at home. Your parent can teach you. That ain't what they created it for. They created it to indoctrinate. To make all the young folks question authority. We don't even want to talk about universities and college. Go there and have a poll about the LGBT. You'll have 100% participation. They're indoctrinated. All the professors are atheists. That's, that's on purpose. It's indoctrination. Take you away from your family for eight hours. We can indoctrinate you. Yeah. They get old enough, they leave church. They don't have no parts of church. But the vast majority of entertainment and education is tainted by Antichrist to indoctrinate this generation. 1 John 2 and 18, little children, it is the last time as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. So you have heard that an Antichrist man is going to come and he's going to be the Antichrist. He's going to be the incarnate, the son of Satan. He's going to stand up and he's going to unite all the nations and all that. You heard that. But John is saying, nah, even now there are many Antichrists. He said there's many of them. You know why there's many of them? Because it's got to be translated in all the different languages and cultures. Can't be no one man. I mean, what, he speak all the languages? He's in every culture? That ain't going to happen. But he is in every culture. He's in all of them. In Greek mythology, he's Apollo. Yeah, he's, he's in all of them. The son of Satan. Or the son of Zeus. Or the son of Odin. Or the son of Osiris. No, I'm preaching in here. <laughs> I'll preach. Yes, I will. Even our churches have bought into societal norms by neglecting to teach family, marriage, and child. What are you teaching then? Look, 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 let's look at it. If the church isn't teaching family, marriage, and child rearing, what you talking about? The power of God. God's power. Well, what good is God's power going to do you if your kid's crazy and your marriage is failing? Well, God's power going to make me feel better about it. So you hate your wife, but God's power got you. What? Your whole home is crazy. All of your, everybody in your house worshiping something different. But, oh, you got the power when the service starts. I mean, as soon as they turn the lights on. Uh, <laughs> drummer sitting there with a tattoo of Satan on his back. Keyboard has got rollers in his head. All the singers' breath smell like weed. Where they were the night before. 
still got hand stamps. And y'all just in that. <laughs> no standard. So you can't invest in the family. You can't solve any problems like that. Because all the problems are in the family. The church is going to only be as good as the homes are. Some of these churches need to just close. Close it down, man. Too tired of having musicals and plays. What are we doing this Sunday? Well, we're not going to have no preaching. The mime team is going to get up and it's just going to be silent that morning. I saw a dude with mime. He had his face painted and then had on glasses. I said, that's it. That's it. Church, to let the church out. You got the mime face and you wearing glasses. Church out! Church out! And that's it! That's it! Just a, it's a carnival. Service is a carnival. What y'all doing next Sunday? Oh, well, we, we, we bring, we're going to have a petting zoo in the service, see? The petting zoo. We're going to have the kids out there where they're going to, we're trying to reach the kids, man. You can't reach the, how you going to reach kids? You don't reach kids. You reach parents and the parents teach their own kids. <laughs> Brother, our youth ministry is booming, man. We got 400 youth. We send buses out, pick them all up. How many adults you got? 12. Brother, you need to close that church down. You, you can't attract none of those kids' parents. You need to shut it down. Because they're not your kids. So if you start teaching them something against what's going on in their house, you're teaching them to be insubordinate. You're out of order. But I'm just trying to rescue them kids. No, why, why are you after the kids? But our churches have bought into societal norms and they're neglecting to teach family, marriage, and child rearing. So instead, the churches push debt. Yeah, as soon as your daughter turned 18, get her loan so she can go to school. But, but, but my mama have to pay this back. Girl, don't worry about that. You'll have a job. You pay that back later. Don't worry about it. You'll have a job. What? You mean you're pushing marriage back too? You're pushing everything back. You get her in debt. Twice as many women in this country are in debt compared to the men. That's on, you don't think that's on purpose to stop marriage? She can't even think about marriage till she's in her 30s trying to pay debts for school. Church didn't teach her nothing. You know, you know who didn't teach her? The older women didn't teach her. You know why? Because they're so busy trying to preach to men. They don't even want to do what God told them to do. God told you exactly who you need to be preaching to. You're supposed to be telling the young girls how to be chaste, keep themselves, love their husbands, love their children. Now, nah, you want to preach to men just because you got hair on your chest. Oh, 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 oh Lord. Oh, yeah, Lord. I don't care how big and burly you are, you don't need to be preaching to no men. You still a woman. And those young girls in the church are suffering. But you know what? They don't want to preach to the young girls because their own daughters are crazy. They didn't tell their own daughter what to do. Got that daughter in debt. Well, but mama, I want to be married. That don't matter now. You, girl, you, you act like you ain't going to get married because you don't know what that man going to do. Teaching that to these young girls. Getting them all caught up in trying to make it in society so they have to believe societal norms now. Outside of the will of God. That ain't what God created them for. Titus 1 and 7. For a bishop or a pastor or an elder, they all the same in this passage, must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon to anger, not given to wine, not a striker, and here's the good one, not given to what? Filthy lucre. So the pastor can't be about the money or he's not going to tell the truth about stuff. 
He going to have all y'all in debt. Getting all these loans and junk. And you can't get a job to pay for those. So you can't consider family. You can't consider children. We can't have no children because we paying off loans. Summary. It's a good message, huh? Yes, <laughs> Plain and simple. You know, I tell you all the time, I used to have dreams about now, like where we are right now. And I would dream that I was leading people out of trouble and problems and different things at the end of the world. I always, you know, I would just have dreams that it was the end of the world and I'd be leading people out of stuff and helping people navigate to the end to get where God wants them to get because things were going to be so bad. And I would be dreaming there's fire all around and people running through, hiding in houses, different things, and God was using me to come. And all that's making sense now because it's all just the gospel. The gospel is the God. Yeah. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a what? Light unto my what? pathway it's the word what God showed me was I just be teaching the word to those that will follow it in a time where folks are afraid to that's it and here's the word right here just like Babylon just us just like Babylon when in Babylon God's people were slaves to that societal system the difference in them and us is we get paid so we're not slaves. Look at somebody say, you're not a slave. <laughs> Boy, LeBron made me so mad when he said that. Oh, see, all the owners of the NFL got all the players. They ain't nothing but a bunch of slaves. Who them the richest slaves I've ever seen? <laughs> Multi-millionaire slaves? Really? They're getting forced to do it? You better catch that ball, Tim Buck. <laughs> they're not slaves but that's the difference in us in Babylon God's people were slaves to their societal system so they weren't just required to do what Sla they weren't just required to do the work that they were commanded to do they were required to worship the false gods we wouldn't even have the Hebrew boy story if they all weren't required they were all required but one day Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego say you know what <laughs> we ain't doing it. But they were required to worship the false gods. They were being controlled by Baal's system and many of them began to convert to Baal worship because they were so heavily indoctrinated and influenced. So they were so heavily indoctrinated, the Bible said that the Pharisees looked up on the walls and saw, and saw all the false gods and different things that were being worshipped and they wanted a part of it. They're like, if I, gotta be lift, if I can't be free from here, then at least I want to be lifted up in here. So make us something, Baal. Make us famous. Yeah, just like these gospel artists. You think these gospel artists want secular fame. They want secular fame. They're not happy with gospel. That's why they'll sing gospel for a while and then they'll do something secular or something with somebody secular or do a secular love album. Yeah. So, you know, they, they've been indoctrinated by the system so much that they want a part of it. The plan God devised for them, the people in Babylon, came from the prophet Jeremiah. I've told y'all this before. He told them to start families. Focus on families. In the time of bondage, when everything is bad, don't you get up and fight. Don't you get a sign and protest. Start a family. Don't get up worried about other folks' families. Start your family. Make sure your family's okay. God's original intent for mankind was for them to be what? Fruitful, fruitful and multiply. Why? Why did God tell them to be fruitful and multiply? Because without physical numbers, we have no influence on society. Our churches today have more funerals than marriages and more divorces than weddings. Yeah. 
Pastor said this all the time. More funerals than marriages and more divorces than weddings. This is because the New World Order has influenced so many pastors to build businesses instead of true churches. So the folks in the church living right, well, they, they okay. But see, we got this property over here, Doc, and we about to build, we about to build 10 Chick-fil-A's on it. <laughs> what about the homosexuals and stuff in your church? Oh, they, you know, we, well, we just gonna, they, they'll come around one day, but brother, we about to build a, a football stadium in the back so we can play t- t- flag football until, can't nobody make us stop. Business. It's about a business. Business. Bringing money back into the church? The New World Order did that. It influenced so many pastors. Without godly families, we do not have godly influence in society. So you're not teaching marriage? You're not marrying folks? You're not teaching against divorce? You're not teaching God's order so men won't get sick of their homes and leave? You know, a lot of men are leaving because of Jezebel. They were so Ahab that they ready to go. Start over. Let's try to reboot this with somebody else. Yeah, but without godly families, man, if you ain't teaching this, you don't have any influence in society. We must get back to teaching family and raising godly children. We must help steer them God's way. So when they get older, they will desire to have families and not do things that inhibit it. Meaning mess it up. This gives us influence, influence, which gives God's way a what? When we have influence, God has a platform. Someone, a prophet will stand up in the midst of those people and say, this is the way it's supposed to be going. Instead of him standing with the crooked politician and saying, y'all vote for him. Who's the influence? This gives us influence, which gives God's way a platform. Then we can be free from societal norms and do things how? God's way so that his presence can be shown in the earth. Here's what he told Jeremiah, a very powerful passage. He said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto what? Babylon. God said, I allowed you to go into bondage. He said, do this, build ye houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. That they may bear sons and daughters. That ye may be what? Increase there. So he said, I'm not going to free you from Babylon. I'm going to increase you in Babylon. Because if I increase you, you will not be diminished. And then he says something very powerful. And seek the peace of the city wherewith I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have what? <laughs> peace. Because the people praying for peace. God give us peace. Oh, well, I'm going to give you peace. But you're going to have to first bring peace where you are. <laughs> yeah. So while the whole world is believing one thing, I'm going to have you believe in something else that will give you peace. You bring peace where you are. He says, so we're going to strengthen the family. We're going to build families. Get numbers so that we can have influence. Because once we have influence, the world will take notice of us. They won't be able to push us around like that if it's too many of us. The Bible said Pharaoh looked up one day and said, wait a minute. (laughs) It's too many of them. He couldn't stop them from leaving. It was so many of them, he couldn't stop them from leaving. And that's what God wants to do with us. He wants us to build families, strengthen our families, strengthen our core, strengthen the thing that matters to him. So we can have influence in this world. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet.
So we ain't, you know, we ain't preaching this whole get in the dead and try to make it and be this and be that. No, we're not doing that. No, we want you to be what God wants you to be. I'm not telling you to not pursue goals and different things, but don't sabotage your future in the process. If you plan to get married, then you don't need to be in debt. Amen. Oh, I should have had single town. The, the lady should have been clapping for that. Or you'll find yourself 30 years old paying debts. Amen. So we're going to do it God's way. We're going to raise up our families. Have a mother and father. That, you know what? God never intended for you to even leave the home until you got married. Uh-oh. No, yeah, society, oh, let's, let's put, no, no, brother, when you turn on your 18th birthday, you getting up out of here. You getting your own place, you going to learn how to be a man. Well, why can't he just watch you and learn how to be a man? Ain't that the best teacher? That's what God did with Moses. He put him in Jethro's house. Moses was a grown man. Put him in Jethro's house so he could learn how to be a man. Oh, brother, you just making that. No, no, but it's scripture. The Bible says it. For this cause. Shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his life? For what cause? Marriage. That's when the man leaves his father and his mother. Amen. My son ain't going nowhere. He might not leave then. I need him. <laughs> they know. Oh, put it back. Because I, I remember he came to me. He was, he was nervous. He was scared when he was about to turn 18. Because I had always told him, as soon as you turn 18, you getting out of here. So his birthday was coming up. He was acting all funny. He thought I was going to really put him out. It's like, no, man, I just had to make sure you was all right. I had to scare you some. But I want him there. He needs to be there. I want him to watch me. Learn what he needs to learn. Got to throw him out there. Oh, it's good for him to get out. Get on out. It's good when they get on out of here. And I'm like, no, you just want them out. You don't even know why. No, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto society taught me in that. You know how they taught him that? With the draft. The service. Pulled him out of the houses. And men start believing, when I turn a certain age, I'm supposed to get out of the house. But God said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, cleave unto his wife, and the two become what? Everyone bow your heads. God, we just thank you, Lord, for this truth, and we thank you for your word and your way. And until we line up with it and do it your way, it's not going to work. You're the manufacturer, and you know exactly how your product ought to operate. And when we get out of line and operate the wrong way, we get sick. Our bodies break down. Our minds break down. Stress and disappointments and anxiety and all these things come because we're not functioning the way you created us to function. The answer for this world is your way. The answer for all of our problems is your way. The answer for every issue is your way. If we do it your way, it will work because you're the manufacturer and you know the product you created. So, Lord, we lean on you for your information. We lean on you for your wisdom and your knowledge. And all our ways will acknowledge you so that you can direct our path. We'll do it your way, God. Continue to speak to us and show us your way. And we'll adhere to it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.